Hello everyone, and welcome to NetWorks Sage X3 video series. In this episode, we're going to be talking about warehousing and bin location types, bin locations, and the replenishment of those locations within the warehouse. Now for the purposes of this video, we're going to assume that you already know how to set up companies within X3 and that you're already familiar with the fact that within each company, we can set up individual sites and these sites could be further broken down into warehouses, although warehouses are optional and you can actually create sites as your warehouses if no site needs to be broken down into individual buildings. Uh, this is more commonly done when there is a campus uh, that is a site and there's individual buildings that you want to set up as separate warehouses. We'll have a subsequent uh, video on how to set that up, but for today's purposes, we're going to uh, kind of start off with location types, locations, how to do replenishment for those locations, and then how to do a location transfer. I'm currently using this process flow as my uh, menu, but of course all of these functions are can be found in the system's uh, main menu setting. Now, similar to the way that every product belongs to a product category, location, bin locations, uh, belong to bin location types. So let's take a look at a few of those. If I click on my bin location types, I will see, and let's just go ahead and uh, set up uh, the demo warehouse here. Uh, the site that we're working in today is NA012 and we can see here that we have all kinds of different bin location types. We have uh, break locations, bulk storage, uh, quality control, uh, things that are on loan for customers, um, uh, picking locations, receiving docks, uh, storage, subcontract type locations. We even have some silos or tanks where we have uh, uh, liquid uh, containers or powdered uh, inventory and, uh, and, and a shop floor uh, locations for our production facility. You can create as many of these location types as you like and there is a drop down box for where we can actually define all of our bin location types and these will carry certain parameters that will impact every location within them. Uh, so for our purposes right now, uh, we're going to be focusing on our picking locations and we can see that these pick locations uh, are set up to do replenishment. Um, we can do some capacity management uh, for these locations uh, where we can set up some maximum weights and dimensions. We can set up what types of units of measure do we track in these locations, what alternate types can we also uh, stock in. What is uh, the format of the actual bin locations within there um, and some other statistics that we can track uh, regarding these bin locations. Now, if we wanted to do a inquiry of all of the locations that belong to this type within this site, I can click on my inquiry screen and I can see a listing of all of those locations. In this case, I have A101, A1102, etc. And I can see whether or not those uh, bin locations are empty or occupied. And I can see, in fact, if they are occupied, what inventory item is there, including what quantities, uh, and is there anything allocated, um, uh, last time I received inventory in there, etc. Now, Oh, let's make that uh, smaller. Um, and if I wanted to, let's say uh, that I was creating a brand new uh, uh, flow rack, another new pick locations within this uh, uh, warehouse, I can simply come over here to create locations. And then I would give it a range. So let's say that I wanted to create from uh, B1101 to uh, B1109. And uh, I can then tell the system that I want to save that, and the system will create those nine locations. I say OK, and it's letting me know that those nine locations have been created. So let's exit out of here for a moment. And let's go ahead and take a look at one inventory item, and uh, we're going to follow its uh, inventory throughout. So if I go to my detailed stock screen, and I look at that warehouse that I'm uh, uh, 
uh, assigned to, and I'm going to look up a specific product that I want to store in that pick location. I can do a search, and the system will show me that I have that inventory item in three locations. Uh, this location and these two other picking locations. I have 820 in storage. I have 101 pick location and 40 in a different pick location. Okay, and now we're going to see how we can actually create a new pick location and replenish inventory uh, in that uh, new empty location. So let's go ahead to that one of those locations that we've created. And I'm going to go to my stock site NA012. And I'm going to look at locations beginning with uh, uh, B1. So they are all the big locations that I just previously set up. So let's go ahead and uh, do uh, let's put that item. Say we're going to store that item in location B1102. So I'm going to scroll down here. And here I can see that in my contents, I don't have anything currently in that bin location. And that's obvious because I just created it. But I do want to put an item in there. I can put in one or multiple items for our purposes. Let's just go ahead and put some uh, uh, requirements for this uh, chain wheel item. I'm going to say that I want anytime I fall below 20 in this uh, bin location, I want to uh, stock it with at least 50 units for that uh, particular location. So once I've put in my requirements, I can now save that uh, setting and I can exit out of this screen. Of course, I would need to do that for all of my inventory items that I'm going to store in those bin locations. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to run our pick location replenishment. When I set this up, I'm going to tell it what site I want to uh, replenish for, and I can further uh, if I set up warehousing, I could set up warehouses within that site. I could set up a range of locations, uh, types. So if I want to just do pick locations, for example, um, I can say, hey, I only want to replenish my pick locations. And I can even subset that to individual locations. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and do my um, B1101 through B1109. Okay, and I can even specify any products or work centers that I want to replenish for. When I say OK, the system will go through and find any items that meet my criteria. And we can see here that in bin B1102, we have that product BMS004 that my threshold was 20. I don't have any in stock. So I've told the system that I want to stock it with at least 50. So it created that one record uh, for me to do a replenishment on. So let's go ahead and exit over here. And when I run my uh, uh, picking location transfers, I can either do that with a PC version of the screen or with a radio frequency version of the screen. So if I had handheld devices where I instruct my warehousing guys to actually issue material and move that uh, th those uh, replenishment suggestions, um, I could do that with a handheld device. But for our purposes today, we're just going to do it with a, the PC version of the screen as there's more real estate and it's a little bit easier to, uh, to follow what I'm doing. So right now, again, we're going to go ahead and put that uh, warehouse that we're interested in. And here I'm going to tell the system that I want to search for any recommended transfers uh, or replenishments uh, that uh, are in that, that warehouse. So as I click search, and I scroll down here, I can see that the system is uh, recommending obviously some other uh, pick locations that it wants me to replenish. But here is that location that we've just determined uh, we need a quantity of 50 uh, of this item in this location. So let's go ahead and select that one. And uh, the system is going to take me to my stock issue screen where it's going to ask me where do I want to uh, pull from. Now, there are three locations where I have inventory. As we saw when we looked up that item, we have 140 in those pick locations. Well, I don't want to move it from there, but I do want these 820 uh, to stock that new pick location. So that's kind of my bulk inventory. So when I say OK, we can see that location and status appear. There's 820. I have 50. So uh, uh, some other information that's available to me uh, shows up, but that's all I really care about. So I'm going to say, go ahead and save that uh, stock issue. 
And now I'm simply going to validate, and that's actually going to do the movement for me. Um, and uh, it's going to allow me to now uh, do those transactions. And that's it. That's all there is to it. I've now replenished that pick location that was previously empty, and I've moved 50 from a stocking location or a bulk inventory location. If I wanted to see the results of what I did, I can move over here to my detailed stock screen and again, uh, uh, key in my warehouse. Excuse me. Key in my warehouse and key in my product. Do a search. And now I see that that inventory item is in four different locations in that warehouse. I now have 770 in my bulk area. I have 100 in my pick location, which we didn't touch. I have 40 in this other pick location we didn't touch. And uh, in this new location that we set up, where we've set up a minimum, uh, the system was obviously below its minimum because it had zero quantities. And the system recommended me to uh, uh, replenish to my max, which of course I could have modified as we start picking from these locations and these uh, quantities start to uh, deplete, I can simply run a new replenishment and the system will tell me exactly what pick locations I need to uh, 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 issue from bulk to fulfill those uh, pick locations and replenish them. Thank you very much.